Hi there. In today's Python exercise, we are going to implement a one-hot encoding algorithm to convert categorical data to numerical format. The reason why you might want to do this is because in machine learning, you only normally can derive insights of data with numbers, not strings. So what is one-hot encoding? One-hot encoding is a way of representing categorical information in binary format but in a way that only one digit in the binary number is set to one. This is why it's called one hot, because only one bit is on at any time in the binary number. The type of categorical data we are talking about is the type where order is not applicable, in this case nominal. If the category has a natural order, for instance, the days of the week, uh, you know, you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, then you don't need to use one hot encoding. You can just assign an integer to each day of the week starting from zero. In general, it's a bad idea to assign an ordinal value to a category which is nominal, for example, a cat or a dog, as the machine learning algorithm will assume that there is a natural order in the category. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can apply one-hot encoding manually, and then later I'll show you how you can um, save time by just using the frameworks uh, that are available, for example, Keras, sklearn, and so on. To understand what one-hot encoding really is, let's start with a very simple example. I'm going to create a very simple category with some animals. As you can see, this category is nominal, meaning that there is no natural order that can be applied to it. So this is a, a really good candidate for one hot encoding. To apply one hot encoding to this category, we need to count how many elements we have in this category. And in this case, we have four elements, which means that the binary number that we're going to generate is going to have four bits. So let's apply manual hot encoding. I'm going to create a dictionary. So what we are creating here, we are creating an index of words and the mapping to their binary number. So the first element in our dictionary is for cat. So cat will be represented by the binary number with four bits, one, zero, zero, zero. Remember, in one hot encoding, you need to have one bit set to one at all times, only one. So I can't have zero. I'm going to create the other mappings now. So now I have here my word index with the mappings for each number. Notice that Python is already converting the number to a decimal format, but we don't need to worry about that for now. To encode categories with a small number of items, it's okay to do it manually and using just a binary number. But when we are dealing with larger categories with thousands of items, representing all the possible items using just a binary number is not possible. Consider, for instance, a 32-bit integer, which is what the computer uh, will typically use to store a number. One-hot encoding only allows us to use one bit at a time in a number to represent an item in a category. So if we are only limited to 32-bit number, we can encode a category with a maximum number of 32 elements. And to represent categories with a larger number of items, we definitely need to use something bigger than that. And that's why we're going to be using NumPy arrays. To understand really how to create one-hot encodings for real data sets, I'm going to do some web scraping now. I'm going to extract the text from the Bible, in this case, Genesis, and I'm going to show you how we can apply one-hot encoding to every single word in the text of Genesis. And for that, we're going to be using the Python request library. Here you can see the text we're going to be uh, scraping. It's limited to the book of Genesis, and uh, each verse, there's a verse number here, which we are going to want to remove, and then we have our text here. And we're going to apply one hot encoding to every single word in this text. So simply using the request library, we can just download this text without much issue. We make sure that the response is a uh, uh, 200, and then if we are able to do a successful request, then we're going to store the text in a variable. And let's print it just to see what we get. OK, 
can see, we're getting um, the text from Genesis. I've only printed the first 2,000 characters. One thing we definitely don't want when applying one-hot encoding are the verse numbers and also the punctuation. We don't want commas, we don't want columns, and so on. So what are we going to do? We're going to write some Python code to cleanse our data and remove any verse numbers or any punctuation that we don't need. And for that, we're going to be using the Python regex library. I'm going to split the text into uh, separate lines using split lines, and then I'm going to iterate through each line. The full line in lines, verse without number, and I'm going to apply a regular expression here, a very simple one. So re dot soup, as in substitute, and then I pass in my regular expression. Well, first of all, you can already see that I can't just remove a fixed number of characters here because the, the verse numbers, they increase based on the number of digits you have. So in this case, you have 110 has more characters than 11, right? So I can't just remove a fixed number of characters uh, from each line, which is, to be honest, the, the preferred way I would do. You know, I'd rather use something simple than try to create some complicated code for something that doesn't need it. So, but in this case, it seems like we have to use a regular expression. We're going to be creating a regular expression to detect this type of format. In this case, a digit or one or more, then a, a column, and then one or more uh, digits. So a digit in a regular expression, you can represent it as a, a backslash D, and then plus means that you can have one or more, okay? And then I have a column, and then I have another uh, more digits, yeah? So digits, column, digits, and then column again. And then I just have to pass in the string I want to replace it with. In this case, I just want to replace it with an empty string. And then I need to pass in the line I want to replace. So you can see the verse numbers are uh, removed. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to create an empty string called verses without number, okay? And I'm going to append to this empty string every time I add a new sentence. So verses without number plus equal, and then my verse. And because the new line was stripped, I'm also going to add the new lines, okay? Then I'm going to print verses without, you can see now the final text without any adverse numbers. But you can see that we still have the punctuation and that's not actually going to be useful and that's going to cause our one hot encoding to go wrong. So what I want to do now is remove the punctuation. There are quite a few punctuation symbols that you might find in the text. And rather than me trying to figure out all the possible punctuation marks, that you can have. I'm just going to be using a predefined list, which you can find in the strings library. So you can see here a list of all the normal punctuation that you'll find in the text. If there's any more symbols that we find in the text, we can always add on top of this. Now, using str.strip, we can remove all the punctuation from our words before applying one hot encoding. So full word in verses without number dot split. So I'm going to use the strip method, the so word dot strip, and then I pass in a list of characters I want to strip. In this case, string dot punctuation. If I have more, of course, I can always add on top of this list. And now I'm going to just print the result so we can see what's happening. Yeah. So none of the punctuations are, are left there. We still have words with uppercase and lowercase. And this is definitely something you probably want to fix. For this exercise, I'm not going to bother about it. All right, so we've now managed to remove all the punctuation from the verses, and we are ready to apply one hot encoding. To apply one hot encoding, I need to look for all the unique words in all the different verses. So I'm going to create an empty dictionary, and I'm going to call it words index. So for each new word I see, I'm going to add it to the dictionary and I'm going to use a counter to keep track of the number. And I'm going to use this number later to assign a binary uh, number. 
So if word without punctuation, not in word syntax, I'm going to add it. And I'm going to assign a number based on the length of the dictionary. This number is not yet our final number. So here we have our dictionary and you can see each word has a number assigned to it. I see some duplicates that's not intended. So something went wrong. I should be using this one. So I use the wrong variable. I use the, the list rather than the actual dictionary. So now it's, this looks all right. To generate the one hot encodings for all the words in uh, Genesis, I'm going to be using NumPy arrays. Now that we have a dictionary with all the unique words in Genesis, we are ready to apply one hot encoding. Just for convenience, I've just created a, a variable with a list of all the words in Genesis already split for us. Now we're going to create an umpire array with all zeros. And I'm going to create an umpire array with two uh, dimensions. One dimension is going to contain the number of elements which corresponds to the number of words in the text of Genesis words in Genesis dot no the length yeah and then the second dimension is going to contain the number of words that we have in our index which is going to be less than the this one so we're going to have lots of duplicated words so this dimension is going to be smaller okay and I'm going to store all the one hot encodings in this numpy array so each item in the list is going to have the number of zeros corresponding to the number of words in our index in our case we have about 2670 words in our index and this means that for each number that we're going to store in numpy dot zeros each number which corresponds to a, a one hot encoded number for the, the word that we are storing, it's going to have 2,670 zeros. For now, we're initializing everything to zero, but later I'm going to set one digit to one only. Oh, we need to import numpy array first. We need to import numpy. And I need to make sure I have brackets around this. So you can see this numpy array, which only has zeros for now. Now I'm going to iterate for all the words in Genesis and I'm going to generate one hot encodings. For word in words in Genesis, making sure of course I remove the punctuation from each word. And I'm going to check if my word is in the dictionary, it should be. And I'm going to now retrieve the index for this word in the dictionary. I'm going to call it the hot index. And now with this index, I'm going to set the hot index. Oh, I need one. One thing here, I need to enumerate this because the first dimension is the index in the list of words in Genesis. Okay. And the second dimension is the index of the word itself in the word index, which only contains unique words. And I don't have the index for the first dimension. I need to enumerate this list here. And with this, I'm going to get the index here. And I can place this index here. And then the second index is going to be the hot index. So basically what I'm doing here, I'm setting to one the number corresponding 
to the hot index. So each, each word is going to have, basically in this case, 2,670 digits, and only one of them is going to be set to one. It's going to be a binary number, a very long number, but only one of the bits is going to be set to one, okay? So let's run this. Now let's have a look at what our array looks like. I'm going to print a partial result. So you can see. So this one has one, then, and so you see only one um, digit is set to one. You can only see a few of the digits here because it's quite a long string. But since uh, one hot encoding is used quite often in data science, you'll find that it is already implemented for you in the most popular data science libraries. For example, in the pandas library, you can apply one hot encoding to a column in a panda data frame using the get dummies method. It's really easy. Let's just give it a go. Before we create our panda data frame, let's just create a list of words in Genesis without any of the punctuation. This time I'm going to use a lambda function and map. I'm going to use map first. So with map, you can apply a function. In this case, I'm going to apply a lambda function, but you can also reference a function by name. This lambda function is going to take an X, which is a, a string, and it's going to strip that string from any characters, which are punctuation characters. And then the second parameter is going to be the, the list that you want to apply lambda function to. In this case, words in Genesis. Let me just call it something else so it's not confusing. Without punctuation. So words in Genesis without punctuation. This is supposed to be a list. And what map returns is a map. So I'm going to apply list to map. And let's just visualize what we get at the end. So you can see, I'm getting a list with all the, the words. So I'm getting a list with all the words without punctuation. Now I'm ready to create the Panda data frame. So I'm going to create a Panda data frame so let me import pandas first, of course. So data frame equal to PD dot data frame. And I'm going to pass in the, the our list. And then as a second argument, I'm going to pass in the list of columns. So we're going to have, we're going to only have one column here. And I'm going to call it words just to be original. And let's have a look at what the data frame looks like. So you can see we have a data frame with 3,000, no, 38,267 rows and one column. Just for reference, in the NumPy array that we had before, we also have the same number of rows. Yeah. But we have 2,670 2, columns. Now that we have a Panda data frame, we are ready to use the get dummies method. The get dummies method by default actually applies one hot encoding to the column that you give it. So Panda dot get dummies. So in brackets, I pass in the column that I want to convert, and then you can pass in a prefix so that each column that it's going to add to the data frame contains this prefix. I'm just going to call it word. Okay. And you can see, just like that, I was able to get pretty much the same result as I had with NumPy arrays with a little bit less code. Okay. Simple as that. If we want to make this a little bit easier to view, we can just reduce the words that we are processing. And in this case, instead of just processing all the words in Genesis, I could just give you a data subset of words, maybe 
10 words. It's going to be much smaller. But the idea is we get an idea of how the algorithm works. So you can see here, it created this data frame with the first 10 words in Genesis. And then based on the unique list of words that we see here, then it creates a column for each word. Okay. You'll notice that it treats lowercase and uppercase different. But this is just an example, so I'm not really worried about that. But if, if I saw the word book twice and one is lowercase and one uppercase, I would ideally want to consider that the same word. But sometimes it depends, you know. All right, so we've done this with Pandas library. You can also apply one hot encoding with the sklearn uh, library and the Keras library. All right. So now let's try and implement one hot encoding with the sklearn library. First, we create a label encoder. And uh, we are going to create our dictionary with the unique words. I'm going to call it sklearnsindex. Uh, and the label encoder, I'm going to call the fit transform method in the label encoder. And I'm going to pass in this list here that we already have uh, cleansed. Okay. Oh, I made a mistake here. You can see all the indices that were generated forwards. So now we're going to apply the one hot encoding algorithm. And we're going to use the one hot encoder class, which is inside the pre-processing library inside sklearn. And we're going to call the method fit. We're going to pass in the array of words index. We need to reshape it. Okay, and now we have to call the transform method. We pass in the same numpy array with the reshape. So this transform actually applies the one hot encoding. And the fit basically was the one that determined the actual binary numbers to use. The result is a sparse matrix, and we need to convert this to a NumPy array. And let's take a look at this NumPy array and see what it contains can see has a lot of zeros and probably ones as well. And we can print the shape just to make sure it matches what we we have seen before. Same shape as the previous NumPy array we created and what also um, the pandas data frame had. And what I'm going to do again, I'm going to reduce the volume of data to make sure that I can see if the results are what we expect. So instead of giving it the whole of Genesis, I'm just going to take the first 10 words. If I only give it 10 words, you can see now quite clearly that each binary uh, number contains only one. One digit with one. This looks fine. Okay, so we've implemented one hot encoding with sklearn library, and now we can try Keras. One hot encoding with Keras comes with a few extra functionalities. For example, by default, all the words that you pass to the tokenizer in Keras will be converted to lowercase. This is to uh, avoid duplicate words being treated differently. Also, you have a parameter called number of words which allows you to specify the maximum number of words that you want to consider to build the word index. 
and this could be useful if you wanted to remove the outliers from your results. You can also customize a filter of characters here. And if all of this stripping that to, you know we've done manually in Keras is done automatically for you, so we don't have to do it ourselves. Okay, so let's apply one hot encoding with Keras. First, I'm going to import the libraries from Keras. In this case, the tokenizer class. And I'm going to initialize a tokenizer. I'm going to set lower equal to false because I don't want to consider words with different uh, capitalization uh, to be the same word. All I want is similar results to what I had before for now. And then I'm going to set the number of words to none. So it's going to consider all the words in the text to be indexed. And now that I have my tokenizer, I'm going to create my dictionary index. Using fit on texts. And I'm going to pass in words in Genesis. Okay. Then I'm going to call the method text to matrix. And this method is going to also take as parameter words in Genesis. Then I pass in a mode. In this case, I'm going to set it to binary. And I'm going to save this into a variable. So let's have a look at what's inside. With print the shape. So the shape looks very similar to what we had before, but it's different. Yeah, so before, so the number of columns is slightly lower and the number of rows is the same, okay? So there's a reason for this difference. So we'll find out what's happening. So I'm going to just get the words index from the tokenizer itself, so word index. And I'm going to iterate through each word in the index. This is the index I created before yeah, with a NumPy array. And I'm going to compare this with the index in the generated by Keras. So if word not in Keras word index, I'm going to print that word. Okay, and see what I get. You can see there are extra words here that are not in the Keras word index. Interestingly, they have a dash. Well, this could explain why a Keras has more words because it's maybe splitting the words on the dash. So you, instead of having just one word, then you will get two words for each row here. I think that's what's happening. But well, let's confirm that. So instead of okay, so you can see Keras without the S. And now only yeah, this one has an S. Okay, you can see beer, yeah, it's splitting based on the dash. And we don't really want that, right? 
So let's just fix that quickly. So I'm going to copy and paste our code and I'm going to pass in a new filter and I'm going to be a bit lazy. So I'm going to copy this filter here. And I'm going to remove the dash. Yeah. So dash is no longer going to be considered a character to be stripped. Then the other code. Oh, I think I added it to the wrong place. One second. Should be here. Okay, so let's see now the shape. So now we have more words, but it's very close now to uh, our original value of 2,670 words. So let's see what's extra still. These words here. So there is this special character here that you didn't strip. You know, at the end of the day, this is a, a data cleansing exercise. We've managed to apply one hot encoding in all the major libraries, and we have also done it manually. Let's just quickly visualize the array. You can see the array here. One thing that's interesting in the implementation for Keras is that it contains an extra column because the first column of each binary number, it's being reserved. The index zero is never set to one, but the one hot encoding can use this bit. You can set it to one. All right, so I've finished now. If you like this lesson, don't forget to smash the like button and I'll see you again soon. Happy coding.